Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Adam Talks, a podcast that takes an alternative look at retirement. This is Adam Bergman, founder and CEO of IRA Financial. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Adam Talks. I'm Adam Bergman, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. And on today's episode, the tax bill and the Biden promise. So been wanting, been waiting to do this podcast for a while, kind of been debating, hey, do I want to you know, get a little bit more political? Just going back and forth with my team producer and just like, ugh, I don't want to deal with politics, right? Uh, I always said from day one, this podcast is not about politics. Um, I want to talk to Democrats, Republicans, independents. I've always felt strongly that the U.S. retirement system works because it's bipartisan, right? Whether it's Secure Act, which was passed in December 2019, which was passed almost unanimously by both members of uh, both sides of Congress, Democrats and Republicans. And it's always given me faith that the system works, right? When something works, both sides, Democrats and Republicans will support it. And unfortunately, we're in a situation now where this tax bill, the reconciliation process, um, it's not bipartisan, clearly. The Republicans are not supporting any of it. And most of the Democrats are supporting it, where there's several senators, not to get into names, and one congresswoman, um, Stephanie Murphy of Orlando, um, well, Florida, who's the Orlando district, that did not support the Ways and Means tax bill. But otherwise, it's pretty, it's pretty much being supported along party lines. So I'm going to kind of dip my feet into this one slowly. Don't hold it against me if if you are a you know lifelong Democrat, uh, which I have a lot of my life, uh, a lot of my friends, and if you support some of these progressive policies, um, really support President Biden, um, that's great. Still love you. Um, but what I do believe is fair is fair. And if someone says something, whether it's a Republican, Democrat, and it's inaccurate, and it involves retirement accounts, it's my job to point it out. So I wanted to focus, and again, I'm, I'm saying this, um, I, I support a bunch of stuff President Biden's done. I think he's a good person. He's um, spent many, many years in the Senate, given his life to this country um, as a senator. So uh, this is in no means um, anything um, as a direct target um, attack on President Biden, but the facts are the facts. And while President Biden was campaigning, he said repeatedly that, and this was part of his campaign promise, that no one making $400,000 or less will see increased taxes. And this is something he's repeated in many cases. You can Google it or go on YouTube. And that statement, you will hear President Biden say many, many times. And it even uh, passed his campaign to when he was president. And if you notice in this tax bill, Many, many of the retirement provisions have a $400,000 income qualifier. For example, the $10 million cap on retirement accounts. There is a qualifier that if you're in less than $400,000 and you're single or $450,000 and you're married, fall jointly, that cap does not apply. Meaning you can have a billion dollars in your IRA, $10 billion in your IRA. If you make less than $400,000 and you're single, that IRA could stay. It is not a cap approach, meaning you don't have to take required distributions if your income is under the 400,000 or 450,000 threshold, if you're married, file jointly and irrespective of your account value and irrespective of the cap. And that was done on purpose, right? It was done because going back to the campaign, President Biden said, hey, my tax policies are going to hit the rich. And in his mind, in the mind of many Democrats, people that make over 400000 if you're single or 450000 married, filed jointly are rich. Okay, I, I disagree with that. I know plenty of people, and I've said this repeatedly, I have plenty of friends in my life that make over that. They have 
two income earners, one's a lawyer, one's a doctor. They make over 450. They're not rich. They're, they're well off. They're, they work hard. They deserve to be successful. They're not super rich. They don't have multiple homes. They don't fly private jets. In fact, they're still paying off, at least my buddy is, still paying off his student debt. So um, I do have an issue with that arbitrary number of four or 450, irrespective of that. There are two provisions in the tax bill, which I've talked about many times. 138312, 138314. 138312 says essentially that if you have an IRA, an IRA cannot invest in any type of investment that requires the IRA owner to have to meet a certain minimal financial, educational, or licensing requirement, i.e. being an accredited investor. And that would stop investments into private placements, reg A's, reg D's, private equity, hedge funds, venture capital, most real estate funds, um, and obviously many debt funds as well. Now, there's a wrinkle to this. It also says this. If you have had your IRA invest in these assets in the past, which it was perfectly legal under 4975, you have two years to unwind that investment, basically get it out of your IRA, sell it, liquidate it, dispose it of it, if you can't, in two years, after that two-year period, you have to take the value of that asset as a taxable distribution. No 10% early distribution penalty, but a taxable transaction. So that means if you have income of $100,000, $200,000, $300,000, if you bought an IRA investment of a private placement or any investment that is prohibited by 138312 that was legal in the past but is now prohibited and you can't unwind these transactions which guess what many private investments if you've done them you understand if you haven't done them you should know that when you make an investment into a private business private fund first of all in many cases there's lockup periods meaning you have to be locked into that fund before you can require a redemption some three or five years. Um, plus, in a lot of these cases, they're private investments and are very hard to sell, right? They're not publicly traded where you can go on Robinhood or Fidelity or Schwab and just buy or sell that asset. These are private businesses, could be your local pizzeria, could be a local uh, business. It also could be a investment fund or a real estate fund that is just super liquid and hard to sell. And if you are required to sell it, you're probably going to have to take a haircut on the price for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, the person buying it is generally not going to have control over that investment. So it will be a passive investment and generally you'll have to sell it for a discount. Uh, on top of that, they're going to know you have to sell it. They're not stupid, right? They understand that 138312 have passed will force you to sell it within two years, giving them the leverage versus you. So it will make things awfully difficult. Now, if you can't sell it because there's a lockup period or you just can't find a buyer because it's a, a raw piece of land in Arkansas or it's in an oil and gas well in Texas or it's a local pizzeria in Oklahoma City that just no one wants to buy, you have to take a taxable distribution on the value of that asset. So that means, President Biden, if you're listening, this is what it means. It means that irrespective of your income, even if it's at 50,000 or 100, 200,000, this provision will force you to pay tax on the income, even if your income is under $400,000, because there's no income threshold, there's no barrier. So that means it goes against his campaign pledge of no tax provision in his policy having the ability to increase taxes for anyone that makes $400,000 or less. 138312 will, in most cases, if someone is forced to sell these investments, require these taxpayers that earn less than $400,000 to pay tax, income tax, not capital gains tax, income tax on the value of that asset. The same goes for 138314. 138314 basically says that your IRA cannot invest in any investment that you own more than 10% of privately or any any entity that you own, you are an officer of private or public. So it's the 10% for private companies. And it could, doesn't have to even just be a 
company. It could be a, a entity. So it could be a passive LC or partnership or S corp or C corp. Anything you own more than 10% of privately doesn't apply to public companies. Your IRA can't own, but if you're an officer of any company, private or public, no matter how big or how small, your IRA can't invest. Again, this two-year window also is included in 138304, and it says if you have done these investments in the past, and they have been legal, they're currently legal now and under 4975, you have two years to get rid of them, remove them out of your IRA, and if you can't, you owe income tax on the amount of that asset, irrespective of your income level. So if you make less than 400,000 bucks and you cannot find a way to get rid of this illiquid asset into a private business or a private fund, whether it's because there's a lockup or because no one wants to buy a minority interest in a private business, then you are forced to take a taxable distribution of that asset even if you earn less than four hundred thousand dollars, so again, one three eight three one four also goes against President Biden's campaign pledge that no one who earns less than four hundred thousand dollars will pay a dollar more in taxes under his tax policies. These two provisions directly contradict that pledge, and it's possible that President Biden is not aware of these provisions. Why? Not his fault. There's 132,000 plus provisions. So can't blame the president for not knowing every detail on every provision in this bill. In fact, many of the Congress men and women that we've spoken to had no idea that these IRA provisions were snuck into this 132,000 provision bill that guess how many pages this is? 2,465 pages. So I don't blame President Biden. He's a busy man. He's got a country to run. He can't read every single line of law in this 2,465-page bill. But he should know that these two provisions, 138312 and 138314, directly contradict, counter, contravene, negate his pledge that he made in his campaign, that he continues to make, that no taxpayer will pay a dollar more in tax under his policies if they earn less than $400,000. And unfortunately, it's not true. So if you're listening, President Biden or anyone on the Biden team or any member of Congress, these two provisions need to be removed not only because they contradict and counter the president's pledge, which is a very important pledge that many people took to heart and, and one of the many reasons that millions and millions of Americans voted for President Biden is they felt that any tax policies he was going to implement or his administration would support would be on the rich. Whether you agree the 400,000 number is fair or not, that's been the pledge and the promise. But these provisions, 138312 and 138314, directly contradict that pledge. Um, so hopefully that's reason enough to remove these provisions. If that's not enough, then these should be the primary reason to remove it, is that they're counterproductive. There's a cap that I mentioned, the $10 million cap on retirement accounts that will stop any future runaway IRAs that... Um, our friend P Peter Thiel uh, was able um, to um, grow uh, from thousands to billions. The cap would stop that, right? There'll, there'll never be another Peter Thiel. So that, that should make the Biden administration and Senator Wyden very happy. So stopping investors from doing very important investments into private businesses, private real estate funds, which ends up supporting millions and millions of businesses who, who count on the $12 trillion of IRA funds as an important source of capital. That includes uh, whether it's from a private business investment or a real estate investment by including 138312 and 138314 in a tax bill, IRAs will no longer be able to invest in future startups and fast-growing private businesses, whether it's through Reg A, 
Reg D or venture capital, private equity, or real estate funds, these future growth companies will not be able to tap into the $12 trillion of IRA funds. Plus, on top of that, 65% of all employees work for small businesses. And IRAs are a very important source of funding for small businesses. So these provisions will actually significantly hamper the ability of small businesses to raise money and, and hire more Americans to work because they will miss out on this very important bucket of $12 trillion of potential capital. On top of that, 138312 and 138314 just raise approximately 1.7 billion over 10 years. So if you're looking at a two or three trillion dollar reconciliation budget bill, this is minor. In fact, 138314, the 10% slash officer provision, only is expected to raise 42 million over 10 years. The bulk of the raise is supposedly found in 138312, which um, is not super clear on that. Seems a little bit, um, I don't want to say funny math, but um, maybe some inaccurate accounting because if people aren't able to invest in accredited investor investments in their IRA, they'll do other investments, whether it's stocks or ETFs or bonds or real estate. Those investments are also tax deferred, right? So it's not like it's going to generate any growth. Where that revenue is expected is from, guess what? That two-year window. But that two-year window applies to taxpayers of all income thresholds even the income earners that make less than 400,000 bucks. So you could assume that a good bulk of that money, that 1.7 billion over 10 years, will come from taxpayers that make less than $400,000. If they're single or 450,000 married filed jointly, which again, directly counter President Biden's pledge that no one that earns less than 400K will pay a dollar more in taxes under any of his tax policies. So. I hope <laughs> I've done my best not to get into a political discussion. Um, this is just the facts that um, obviously President Biden is not aware of these two provisions. We're hoping that um, he is now um, because our industry has spent lots of time um, educating members of Congress, senators on the potential detrimental impact these two provisions could have. Um, so hopefully he's now aware of it and hopefully now understands that um, these two provisions um, count, contradict directly his pledge on income and taxes. So that should be impetus enough to remove them. But if not, hopefully he's listened to this podcast or someone in his circles have and could um, talk to him about the importance IRAs have as a source of capital formation for small businesses and real estate uh, ventures in the United States. And with $12 trillion of IRA funds, um, that is a huge bucket of income to uh, basically take off the table as a potential source of cash for small businesses and growing American businesses. On top of that, the revenue raise is minuscule, $1.7 billion over 10 years, which most of that revenue raise will come from forcing people to pay tax on the private placements or other investments they've owned in their IRA legally, I should say, 4975 only says you can't do anything prohibited. And 408 says you just can't buy life insurance or collectibles with an IRA. So forcing people that earn less than 400,000 bucks, which probably makes up the bulk of the investors in these assets, right? The accredited investor thresholds says this, you have to have $200,000 of income if you're single, $300,000 married filed jointly, or a million dollars in net worth, or you have a certain qualification, i.e. a series, you're working in an investment firm, for example. So it's very, very, very possible that taxpayers, and, and probably more likely than not, that the majority of taxpayers that will owe tax on their IRA assets that they're forced to distribute under 138312 and 138314 are individuals that earn less than $400,000 a year or $450,000 married filed jointly. In fact, most IRA owners are in the low to middle class. So that's the case. 
um, obviously for this push to remove 138312 and 138314 for no other reason that it contradicts the president's promise to all of us, whether we voted for him or not, that no one earning less than $400,000 will pay a dollar more in taxes from any of his tax policy. So um, there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Um, and on top of that, I just want to make one other thing um, is that the tax that they will impose is not just capital gains tax. Even though if they bought the investment personally, they would more likely not be subject to the long-term capital gains tax, which is now 20% for the highest tax bracket, which is proposed to go up to 25%. They can pay ordinary income tax which can go as high as, as 39.6. So it's kind of a, a, a double hit. They have to be forced to take the money out and, and pay tax on that asset, even though it was legal when they bought it. And they'll have to pay ordinary income tax instead of capital gains tax, even if they earn less than 400,000 bucks, um, as, as the president promised would never happen. So um, one more reason, if, if you are as um, you know concerned with these provisions as I am, um, let me know. Um, I can give you talking points that you can send your member of Congress or your senator and, or talk to them with these talking points and educate them. Right. It's all about education. It's, it's a process. It takes time. Um, it takes time to educate the members of Congress and the senators on this provision. Most of them you'll talk to uh, may not even be aware of it. And, and the, the ones we have talked to are finally understanding the uh, broad negative impact uh, it could have. So thanks again for listening. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, really, really appreciate it. Um, I was reluctant to do this podcast again because it is, you know, touching on on some, you know, political tones, but I, I tried my best to just keep it neutral. Again, not about President Biden, not about Republicans or Democrats, just basically the pledge, the promise, which you can go online and Google or go on YouTube and watch uh, campaign videos and uh, you can you can hear it from his mouth. Um, and, and that's just something that I wanted to point out as a tax lawyer, someone who's you know, very focused on these two provisions because of, of their broad negative impact, which I don't think the drafters and enough people understand. Um, it also clearly doesn't uh, play with what President Biden wants which is no tax for anyone that earns less than 400,000 bucks, which, as I mentioned repeatedly, <laughs> 138312 and 138314 um, does do. So thanks again for listening and I uh, really appreciate all the support. You guys are awesome. Have a wonderful week and talk to everyone again uh, next Wednesday. Take care.